I'll be honest, I'm a competitive ass person and that's one reason I'm into it. It's all, it's very much ego driven, you know, like there's definitely something behind it, but it is about ego. But having that something behind it on top of this whole like ego fight to like get your name known is really important. Like the shit should be, you know, you should be trying to say something with it. I kind of put up posters getting people to come out to an event or recently I've been doing more like statistic stuff and microeconomics and the conditions of Baltimore. In Baltimore, there's just so many vacants, like a sixth of the houses in the city are vacant. It, it beautifies the place so that we live. Like, um, regardless of whether it connects people, like, it, if you take this ugly ass vacant that has been, like, um, really dealt with by the landlord in a really, not only illegal, but just, like, horrible for the city way, like, um, you put a, something on it, it reinvents that place. Baltimore has a flourishing street art scene, which has grown over the years to include new forms such as wheat tasting. The new medium allows more and more young people to creatively express themselves within a rapidly vacating city. The scene's pretty much interesting. It's like definitely gone through waves. I feel like stuff's really trying to, uh, starting to pick up. If I would characterize street in Baltimore, it'd be kind of, I guess, on two fronts. The first being like wheat pasted street art and the other being letter graffiti. You can't go out there and, and just like spray paint some statistic or some message or call for people to rally at some point with like a spray can because that's perceived as vandalism and that's an easy way for people to discredit you. So street art is like a softer approach. It's just a question of like, where are you putting it up? Is it like a, a major thoroughfare where tons of people going or are you in there putting it on some guy's small business that he has to deal with it now and like he doesn't want your highfalutin art idea on the side of his hardware store. My biggest enemy is not that graffiti kid even that's dissing me. It's that landlord owner who has furthered the shitty condition that our city is in by not maintaining his property because he's holding on to it, hoping to make money someday or just can't keep up with bills and doesn't want to maintain it. And when I put a piece on one of those people's houses, it's not necessarily an attack on them. It's not even about them. It's about me taking that place and now it's my place. What, how I like to think of it, it's kind of like reclaiming public space for whatever kind of discourse you want to use it for. The growth of street art in the city has sparked major public art projects, such as Open Walls Baltimore. The intent of the project is to enliven public spaces, stimulate community revitalization, and create national dialogue according to its mission. We would hope that this becomes a multifaceted project in not just being the production of murals, but also uh, facilitating moments where people can talk to the people who have real stakes in this neighborhood. I think um, the Open Walls project is something that is um, 
really awesome for the city that um, have happened. They're bringing um, a lot of really famous street artists into Baltimore and um, it is and it will create like a vacuum and a larger appreciation for art and um, kind of reinvention of different facades. What is this for? Is this for the big developers and gentrifiers or is this for the people to enjoy like art on an every you know day-to-day -day basis? And that's just what I would question about it. They got some cool work. Some of it I don't like at all. Some of it I like a lot. The artists are engines in some sort of capacity for gentrification. Something that I think can be odd about street art is you're like an artist and you're acting as a gentrifier going into neighborhoods with buildings that are dilapidated and you're using that as your platform to put forth your work. It's a very complicated situation, but once, but of course, no matter how dangerous gentrification is, when it comes to displacement, the flip side is that, you know, it's remarkably positive for those who are able to stay. I think there are good ways of gentrification. Often, a reality of the situation is to make good shit happen, you need money. We're talking about art, but we're talking about something so much more. I think that the most positive effect um, that it has is it solidifies people's connections to the places where they live. People notice things more, you know, they look around more, like they are more present in their lives and their cities. And the more, the more thought that occurs like that, I think the better our societies are going to be off.